So the electric revolution is well underway and internal combustion engines are going the way of the dinosaurs that they're fueled on. Am I right? Of course I'm right, I'm always right. Although maybe, maybe not, don't know. Here's a quick recap. In 2030, you won't be able to buy a new internal combustion engine car in the UK. That date is 2035 if you live in Europe. So what's gonna happen to petrol cars? What's gonna happen to petrol stations? And what's gonna happen to petrol? What about all the people that have to use petrol or diesel cars because they live on the 17th floor of a block of flats in a part of town where EV charging infrastructure hasn't quite made it yet? What about the people with five litre Mustangs? My people who just wanna go for an occasional blast every weekend to smoke the tires. Come on, give us that pleasure. If your local Texaco has been replaced by a charging station to cater for all the new EVs, where are you supposed to get your petrol? It's gonna be like Mad Max. People are gonna be literally roaming the wastelands of Europe, fighting each other over the last drops of Super Unleaded. And I don't wish to alarm anyone here, but according to the internet, I saw a meme that apparently said that Mad Max was set in 2021. It's all coming to fruition. Anyway, there might be a bit of a solution in the form of synthetic fuel. You heard me correctly, synthetic fuel. Good old fashioned liquid that you put into a tank from a regular pump that you can power your car through a number of tiny controlled explosions under the bonnet, just like we used to do in the old days. Side note, my kid walked into the room this morning and said, Daddy, what are you doing? And I said, making a video. He goes, what about? I say, synthetic fuel. He says, what's that? I say, no idea. I'm gonna Google it. He goes, good luck with that. And I, I Googled it and here's what I came up with. Strap in. So. By using electricity, or to be more sciencey, electrolysis, you can separate water into its constituent parts, oxygen and hydrogen, which is actually how you get the hydrogen for fuel cells. But apparently we can go one greener than that and keep our VX. Check this out. So by combining the hydrogen with CO2, yes, the stuff that we're all trying to reduce from the atmosphere, you can actually make synthetic methanol, which you can then refine into synthetic petrol or diesel to fuel your existing ice car in a way that effectively consumes CO2 instead of pumping it into the atmosphere. And if you run that refinery on renewable energy like wind power, then you've got the ultimate, hypothetically, ultimate green fuel without a battery pack in sight. Meaning that every time I drive my Mustang, I'd be saving the planet. You're welcome. And the thing is, synthetic petrol can be dispensed from existing infrastructure. The same petrol stations we use today can be used to accommodate synthetic fuel and you can refuel your car in minutes as opposed to hours. It seems like the perfect solution. But as always, there's a reality check. It's not as easy as it sounds. And I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. But before I get to that, let's break down a few of the companies that are actually pushing forward with this. Porsche are investing heavily in synthetic fuel production with the intention of throwing a lifeline to all of those ICE fans out there. Well, the ones who own 911s and Caymans. Anyway, that's why Porsche, along with Siemens and the German government and various other interested parties are chucking huge investment at the production of low carbon liquid fuel that they're calling e-fuel. And that includes a new refinery that will be able to produce 550 million liters of the stuff within five years. Porsche need this to keep their motorsport program running with a clean conscience and to fuel the sports cars that you can drive at their experience centers and ultimately to sell to the owners of their existing road cars to keep them running, classics included. They're not stupid. The Taycan might be doing the business right now of taking the brand into the electric age and hybrids mean that ICE models have a little bit of a future beyond 2030, maybe by 2035, but heritage is very important and their sports cars have a long shelf life and the guaranteed return that owners get from special models is massively important for their bottom line. If all of those GT3s sitting under sheets as investments were suddenly rendered worthless by being legislated off the road, then they're gonna be facing a lot of very angry flippers, I mean customers. And actually that race is a really important issue, doesn't it? If you're one of these guys that are hoarding a really nice petrol car, you know, trying to sell it one day in the future, now's the time to get out there and drive it. Like every tank full is your last because you might not get that much of an opportunity in the future. Anyway, it's not a big surprise that this drive for synthetic fuel is getting a leg up from the Germans. Think about it, they're a big industrialized nation of petrol heads. That's where the car was invented and they don't have their own source of oil. Historically, that's not been too much of a problem, apart from 
that one particular period. I know, I know, don't mention the war and all that. But back in World War II, I'm mentioning the war, aren't I? <laughs> uh, one of Germany's biggest vulnerabilities was how to fuel its planes and tanks. And as time went on, bombing raids took out the refineries in Romania and other places that the Germans relied upon for oil. And when you consider that their vehicles were running 23 litre engines, oil was kind of a big deal. So here's what they did. By using coal, which they had loads of, to generate electricity, they made synthetic fuel back in World War II. Thankfully, and in so many ways, times have changed and we're now looking at synthetic fuels being used as a force for good. But there is one important issue with this amazing new synthetic fuel plant that Porsche and Siemens and the others are investing in. Quite a big one, if truth be told. You see, creating synthetic fuel needs a lot of energy. And if you're doing that through the normal electricity grid, then that means you're potentially using dirty fuel to make clean fuels. And there's no real point in doing that. You have to use renewable energy to make it worthwhile. And if you're doing that, then you're gonna need a lot of wind, a lot of sunshine or a lot of waves, whatever it is that you're getting your power from. The good news is that they've found just the place with enough guaranteed wind to turn the turbines to power their new facility. Bad news is that it's in Chile, South America. And that's an issue, isn't it? If you're gonna be making 550 million liters of green gasoline a year, how do you propose getting it from Chile to my local fuel station. It looks like I'm gonna have to invest in more than just a green wrap to convince people that I'm ecologically woke. And this just sums it up, doesn't it? The world is full of idealists who make sweeping generalizations that electric vehicles are good and ice vehicles are bad or ice vehicles are good and electric vehicles are bad. Or they might think that synthetic fuels are the definitive solution. Or they think that hydrogen is the definitive solution. They bet their houses on it. They scream it in YouTube comments. There's no overnight miracle solution that applies to every human or every type of transport. I personally believe that electric vehicles are the future. No, they're not perfect at the moment because the infrastructure will need to develop, but that's happening. And the energy mix needs to get greener, but that's happening. And the batteries that are currently mined from non-sustainable sources are an issue, but that's changing. Anyway, the issue is massively complicated and clearly we need a way to keep powering our legacy vehicles or vehicles that just can't run on electric power at this stage. So synthetic fuels might be the answer to that. Or they might not be. But if there's a way of keeping my V8 Mustang running for a few more years after 2030, even if it's just on weekends, then I'm willing to listen. Right, drop me a like if you enjoyed this video or if you learned something new and drop a comment down below so we can argue this out like school children in the comments. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.